How, well, like, I always wanted to ask you this. When was your vision first compromised? Was it after the, it was after the VTOR fight, right? It, it was the VTOR fight that did it, uh, and I slowly s started getting our symptoms. I was do doing this a lot in restaurants. You know, in restaurants are dark, some of them. I was like, I was doing this, you know, and my friends would be like, oh, he's doing that thing again with his hands. I'm like, can you see your hand there if you do that? And so I, but the people are just listening. You have your hand next to your face. Yeah, and you're but like I'd be like moving your fingers yeah, around and you couldn't to, see it. Yeah, exactly. And then by the end, it was like right in front of me there and I couldn't see. And it was at that point. Mixed martial arts is a brutal sport and sometimes fighters pay a huge price for dedicating their life to this craft. In today's video, we will overview 10 MMA representatives who lost their health doing what they love. Please don't forget about the likes, comments with four words, and subscribe to the channel. Here we go. Number 10, Sharabutin Magomedov. I love everybody, my fans. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dana. Thank you, Ali Abdelaziz, Rizwan, my coach, my corner. Very good, perfect brother, perfect, I'm happy. We start today's compilation with one of the most vivid and promising prospects from Dagestan in the world's best league. Shara Bullet is one of the few UFC rookies whose appearance was really anticipated despite not the most eventful career in terms of modern standards. The reason for such a demand of this fighter comes down to two things. His flashy fighting style that shows all the beauty of striking technique and a typical pirate-like appearance that instinctively draws attention of people. However, not many people know that a cloudy right eye of Magomedov is not just a peculiar feature of his, but an injury that he sustained in 2016. In fact, we don't really know how or in what circumstances he suffered this trauma, in training or in a real fight. However, we know that his vision was gradually getting worse after this incident. Sharabuddin refused to go see the doctor until the very end as he thought that it was just a spasm and it would go away on its own. But the treatment was very much needed. In reality, everything happened to be a lot more serious. Retinal detachment. Thanks to the qualification of medical personnel, which treated his case very responsibly and performed eight surgeries, not allowing the athlete to train for one and a half years, the Dagestani managed to get away more or less unscathed and even continue his career. His vision stayed intact, but the eye itself changed. It developed a nebula. Compared to other athletes in this compilation, Magomedov happened to be luckier. I remember that one day I was hitting the bag and the coach was standing in the front and then I figured I can't really see the bag. I don't see it properly. I blinked and then I started to worry. The coach comes up to me and asks, what's wrong? I close my eye and say that I can't see him and his face, only silhouettes. Number 9. Kenny Florian UFC 136 Aldo versus Florian is actually going to take place right now. <laughs> Just a little bit of a different forum here. <laughs> Not many people remember the name of the American veteran but in his time, he contested the world champion of the world's best league three times and somehow managed to perform in four different weight classes throughout his career. Right now, Ken Flo is an expert who hung up the gloves in 2012. This decision was quite tough for him. After losing to the King of Rio in the title fight at UFC 136, Kenny shared his plans of returning to the lightweight division. After making this statement, Kenny elaborated that he needs around half a year to gain mass. And as luck would have it, just a month after that, Florian injured his back, which happened to be fateful for him. At first, the veteran did not really take it seriously because he still had like five months to prepare and move up a weight class. Not realizing all the seriousness of the situation that he got into, the fighter continued training after a short period of time. After recovering from the back injury, at least as he himself thought, the veteran started to train hard, and that's when he faced a harsh reality. At absolutely every training session, Kenny started to realize that he feels numbness in his right leg. The reason for that happened to be a rupture in the intervertebral disc in his spine. His condition was so bad that Florian had to seek out medical help and all the orthopedics and neurologists unanimously advised him to end his career as a professional fighter. In fact, in May of 2012, Kenny officially announced his retirement. 
You know, I've dealt with injuries in the past, and uh, you know, back in November, I was back into training and, and hurt hurt my back uh, working out, and uh, just hasn't quite been the same. You know, so been dealing with it, been trying to get back and doing rehab and things like that, and a few weeks ago, kind of re-injured it again, and so it's been uh, it's been tough, man. You know, just haven't been able to train. And Number eight, Alan Crowder. Oh yeah, I missed a huge opportunity. You know, obviously I lost the first one, um, but you know, I plan to turn that around. Uh, the, being a co-main event on the first ESPN car, it's just a, it's a huge opportunity, you know what I mean? I'm able to really recover from my uh, first fight, and uh, I think it's going to be a great opportunity. This guy is not remembered by many as well, but in his time, he broke into Dana White's contender series with flying colors and earned a contract with the world's best league. Before arriving in the UFC, the American heavyweight prospect had a record of 8-2 and, and had all the aces to make some really big waves in the major promotion and establish himself at a new place. After the win over Dontel Mays, Crowder officially got on the roster and started his preparation for a debut performance. Unfortunately for him and all of us, the fight that took place in December did not end really well for him. He lost via knockout to Justin Willis in the first round. Due to some circumstances, the prospect came back into the game only two years later. In January of 2019, he got a win over Greg Hardy via disqualification. And already in June, a barely started career of a young prospect came to an end after losing to Jairzinho Rosenstrike by a knockout in 9 seconds, Crowder disappeared from the radar for a couple of months. As it turned out a bit later, he started to experience memory loss after the last fights, which resulted in brain concussions. All of that forced him to hang up the gloves at the age of 30 to avoid making his condition worse, which already was not good. I just turned 30 this year and I've had some memory problems and it wasn't worth it and I want to watch my little girl grow up. The memory loss has been happening more and more lately. I'm talking to the doctor about it now and just find out what is happening. It is just little stuff like I'll be making coffee and I'll put the theanin into it to avoid the crash. So I'll put my cup in the curry and I'll look for the theanin. I'll then stress out to my wife because I can't find it. It will be beside the cup which is now off the Keurig and I can't remember taking that theanin out of the cupboard or taking the cup of the Keurig. This is not good. Number 7. TJ Grant Ariel Hawani just days away now from UFC 160 alongside TJ Grant who has a huge fight on Saturday night against Gray Maynard because the winner will face Benson Henderson. By May of 2013, this fighter was on a streak of 5 victories. Not that long ago, he stopped Gray Maynard at UFC 160, putting his name in the title conversation. Overall, his record accounted for 21 wins and 5 defeats and the majority of the fights that he won did not go to a decision. TJ Grant had all the chances to go down in history as one of the lightweight champions. It seems like everything was on his side – age, skills, experience, desire to compete and please the fans with spectacular performances. On top of that, he was on great terms with the company and had a family with a newborn he had to provide for. He really had to be the next title contender. However, none of that was meant to happen. Too intense work in training and flashy fights in the spotlight damaged the athlete's health. Frequent concussions in camps, brain traumas in sparring sessions and in the octagon started to affect the veteran's day-to-day -day routine. Fortunately, like it was the case with the previous performer, he made a decision to retire himself. After considering all the pros and cons, TJ Grant decided in favor of a healthy lifestyle and family. Right now, he is living a happy life and works at a regular job. Sure, sometimes the fighter reminisces this chapter of his journey to relive that feeling of constant improvement and competing at huge arenas. It is very busy and I mean with everything that has happened it's nice to have him home to be have another set of hands with the kids because they are a very young age and you don't want to miss out on too much with them so it's nice that he's healthy as well and that he can have fun with them and be that good dad that he is. Number 6. Zabit Magomed Sharipov The biggest what if of them all, maybe one of the greatest what ifs in UFC history while well, I'm still wearing this, is uh, Zabit. 
Man, that's, a, that's another one. Like, he was right there. Right? He like, was right he was there. very close. He just had, had to have that one fight, and then... He just disappeared. He said, yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. At the number six spot, we have the biggest mystery of mixed martial arts. Back in the period of 2018-2019, the Dagestani ninja was taking the world's best league by storm. He was dismantling his opponents to pieces, threw wild spinning kicks, impressed everybody with his striking mastery, and was simply conquering the UFC, advancing in the rankings. Before his sudden retirement, Zabit was on a streak of 14 victories, six of which were earned in the major organization. He was in good standing with the promotion's representatives and was literally one step away from the title shot. His last appearance in the Octagon that took place on November the 9th of 2019 was the main event of Fight Night in Moscow. It seemed like he was getting better with every victory, the views were growing, attention was getting bigger, and relations with the company were getting stronger, just a bit more, and we could see a new world champion from Dagestan. Not at all. After beating Calvin Kada, Magomed Sharipov disappeared from the radar. At first, the fights got cancelled, not because of Zabit, due to which his comeback was continuously postponed. Then, he failed to reach an agreement with the matchmakers, who almost intentionally did not offer him a title fight and fed him promises. And after that, there was a confirmation of rumors that the fighter, who was ranked number three in the featherweight division, retired from the professional sport. The athlete's manager mentioned the health problems of his client already in May of 2021. According to him, it wasn't a physical injury, but an issue with the immune system, which stops him from getting in shape. Many people on the internet speculated that he developed this condition because of exhausting training and weight cuts, which never go unnoticed. Either way, all these things combined made one of the most promising representatives of the sport stop fighting for good. You're done 100% right? Maybe you will come back? Is there anything that can change your mind? No, most likely not. My word, I still can't believe it. I'm not completely sold on that. How old are you? I'm 32. It's like when I was 29, I figured I was done, you know? I already knew that it's over. Number 5. Mirko Krokop Forget yes. his stare down with Vandalay for that first fight. Oh, yeah. The first fight, someone someone finally outstared Vandalay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, 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 no, he was not afraid. No, no, no. This guy's a straight up killer. <laughs> oh, yeah. Looking right into your soul. A famous Croatian policeman is on this list for a reason. However, to get to that point, we have to refresh our memory. Throughout a couple of decades, a legendary veteran has been conquering combat sports and not only mixed martial arts. He wrote his name down in the history of the fighting game and delivered numerous vivid highlights in his performances. Almost every fight of Krokop looks like an action movie where the main hero smashes everybody in his way in an extremely convincing and dominant fashion. In fact, the Croatian's career simply screams of how big of a sports fan he is, as he had time to compete in almost all major leagues in various disciplines. Pride, K1, Ryzen, Bellator and UFC. It's just a couple of places where Mirko Filipovic fought in the past. The veteran had 53 bouts in MMA alone, winning in 38 of them. And the fact that he drove into the sunset with 10 victories in a row at the age of 44 speaks for itself. And since we mentioned that, the last fight of Mirko Krokop took place in February of 2019. And of course, it resulted in a win over Roy Nelson. By that moment, Scott Coker stated his intentions of putting the Croatian against Fedor Emelianenko in a rematch. However, a month later, we found out that the renowned fighter had an apoplexy. Due to issues with his neck, which bothered Mirko during the last years of competing and other injuries together with exercising, Krokop's health really deteriorated. He suffered a seizure followed by a cerebral hemorrhage. Luckily, the doctors managed to treat him in time and save his life. However, he was told that he should quit fighting and retire, because otherwise another one of such strokes could be fatal for him. So there is no chance you're gonna fight again? No, no chance. I'm not entering the ring ever again. Number 4. Michael Bisping Everybody, I'm sorry I'm late. Dana, my apologies. George, my apologies. Um... Everybody gives a f that you're late. Sit down. No, I'm sure. <laughs> Come on, guys. 
Who of you thought at the beginning of this video that the count should be in this compilation? Let us know in the comments below. So yeah, Michael Bisping deserves this spot on that list like nobody else due to his health problems that he developed during his MMA career. In fact, the entire career of Bisping in mixed martial arts was truly spectacular. Prior to the events we are going to talk about, the former UFC champion had time to thrill the fans with his nerve-wracking performances, sometimes finding himself on the wrong end of a knockout victory. But strangely enough, the Brit kept on consistently going into the octagon despite injuries and concussions up until November of 2017. Or more so, he won the middleweight championship and had one title defense before retiring. Only two years after quitting the sport, Bisping shocked the world with his revelation. For the last four years, he had been performing with one eye. That's right, since his fight with Vitor Belfort, Michael Bisping was entering the cage with one eye due to the trauma he sustained on that very night. Retinal detachment, five unsuccessful surgeries and prosthetic eyeball. That was the routine of the count during that time period. However, what's more surprising is that he managed to fool the athletic commission for four years after this accident. And not just somewhere, but in the UFC, the best league in the world that pays a lot of attention to the health of their athletes. In other words, Michael Bisping is a true warrior who even despite such a terrible injury, not only managed to continue his career, but also become the champion at the end of his oh, journey. By the way, I wore my glasses, my dark glasses, as I said, to hide from the commission. A load of this. Check this out. Look at this, baby boys. Uh... You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Number three, Spencer Fisher. This is my career. This is how I pay my bills. And uh, I just uh, knew it was a do or die. And, and it kept that in the back of my mind. I have a family to feed. And uh, just that was all the motivation I need, needed to get out there. But Spencer Fisher is a famous veteran of the world's best league and a fan favorite of the past era. Even despite the fact the American didn't try the UFC gold on his waist, he had time to be remembered by tens of thousands of people around the world. His story is remarkable due to the fact that before 2012, he was performing like nothing was wrong, at least that's what many people thought at that time. However, at a certain moment, Spencer suddenly disappeared from the screens and headlines in the media. We think that you already know what the reason for such an unexpected disappearance was. Actually, after years of wild performances for the crowd's entertainment without worrying about the consequences, Fisher neglected his health really badly, to such an extent that when he tried to take action, it was already too late. His brain received the most damage. He quickly loses memory every year and suffers from severe headaches. His diagnosis is a traumatic encephalopathy. The disease of American football players and boxers who sustain frequent brain concussions. Right now, the veteran is retired and has to take a lot of medication, which takes away most of the money his wife earns. As Spencer said himself, his condition resembles more of a walking dead person who is afraid of waking up one day and forgetting about his close ones. Because when you're young, you're, you're thinking of the right now and uh, living in the moment. and the money at the time and and uh, even though it wasn't great you know i got a lot of bonuses and got sponsors at the time and uh i was living happy you know happily and uh then one day it always comes to an end regardless of what sport you're in but the uh, injuries i took for, from it uh just i don't know yeah, i don't know if it was worth it you know and now my message is to tell people that hey this is a possibility this could happen to you and it's very real and it's changed my life. Number two, Kevin Randleman. I like being colorful, not just because I'm black, but you know, I like being colorful. I just... Unfortunately, the last two cases are quite out of the ordinary. A tragic story of Kevin Randleman can serve as an example for everybody who does professional sport and doesn't shy away from exhausting themselves with hard training. Old school fans remember who Kevin was in the 2000s and that he got the monster nickname for a reason. However, this vicious era of permissiveness and absence of any control over the athletes ultimately happened to be the reason for all the bad things in the American's life. And he had a lot of them. 
The list goes a long way, but we will limit ourselves to just a couple of things that will break us in. The majority of Randleman's problems were caused by anabolics that he actively used in his youth. Besides that, it didn't go without severe injuries which accumulated over time and weakened his system. Throughout his life, Kevin had more than 20 surgeries, every one of them was breaking down the athlete's immune system piece by piece. But the most severe illness of the monster happened to be a staph infection. That's what took away the biggest chunk of his health, which is not an exaggeration at all. The fighter's health became so weak that he began rotting alive. Huge holes appeared on his body, which we obviously can't show in this video. Randleman's career ended in 2011 and five years later, he suddenly left this world. On February the 11th of 2016, the fighter passed away in the hospital where he was put due to pneumonia. The cause of death happened to be heart failure. At that moment, he was only 44 years of age. He was, he truly was a great guy. I mean, all my interactions with him where he's always laughing and smiling and hugging people. And yeah, I remember I ran into Kevin once. Uh, we were at the fights. It was a smaller organization. It was f f there was some fights going on in Vegas and Kevin and I ran into each other at the concession stand. And uh, he gives me this big hug. What's up, man? How yeah. you doing, man? And then other people were coming over and it's just fans. Fans coming over. Hey, what's up, Kevin? He's like, how you doing, man? Yeah. So hugging everybody and smiling. I'm like, what a fucking jovial guy. Number one. Anthony Johnson. Uh, it's been in my mind for a while, but I made, I, I gave uh, another, I, sh I should say venture, my, my word, you know what I mean? Win, lose, or draw, this was going to be my last one, and uh, they are waiting on me, so uh, I, just, I just have to do it. And at the number one spot, as sadly as it sounds, we have the late Anthony Johnson. The career of Rumble in mixed martial arts was truly great. He wrote his name down in history and was remembered as one of the most vicious and terrifying performers of all time. His professional talent was more than enough for a bunch of fighters of championship caliber and warriors who fight till the very end. Even outside of the octagon, he continued to fight for his life and didn't tell his loyal fans about his issues till the very end and they couldn't wait for his return to the top of the food chain. As we already said, back-breaking years of Johnson's active career couldn't not affect his health. In the last years of his life, he fought through a serious illness, but hoped for the best and believed that he could overcome it. In 2021, he even managed to perform at Bellator 258 and knock his opponent out in the second round. Anthony was planning to do the same in 2022, but his illness happened to be stronger. In November 13th, at the age of 38, Rumble passed away. The first one to announce this news in the media was the former UFC fighter Jake Shields who shocked the entire MMA community. Rest in peace Rumble. Dude, Rumble passed nowhere. away this week. Yeah. Apparently uh, he had some form of, uh, I think it was like non-Hodgkin's lymphoma or something along yeah. those lines. Yeah. I don't know if that's public. Leave your opinion in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the new videos. And of course, hit the like button if you enjoyed this one. See you soon.